My name is Ed Hussain. Uh, I'm a Muslim and I've had the good fortune of living across the Muslim world. I'm a born and raised Londoner. Despite being born and raised in a free city, in a free country, I harbored attitudes of hatred and bigotry towards Jewish people and by extension Israel. I don't often talk about this, but given the rise of extremism and anti-Semitism in our midst, here in the West, but also in the Middle East, I think it's absolutely necessary, in fact, religiously obligatory on Muslims who've gone through that journey to talk about it. So why did I hate Israel? I started to meet extremists, radicals from a host of organizations in the Middle East, most particularly Hizb al-Tahrir and Hamas, who taught us that Israel was in occupation of Muslim land, so all of Palestine belonged to Muslims. I went to Hamas gatherings every Wednesday afternoon with professionals here. They were not all angry extremists. Many of them were accountants, lawyers and engineers. And the message that we went away from from those gatherings was to organize, was to agitate, to protest against Israel's very existence. For me, there was a major turning point that made me question our attitude towards Israel. I was driving along with a group of friends from a, a radical Islamist organization and they saw Jewish people on a Saturday afternoon and uh, in North London they turned around and said, pulled down the window and said to them, go back to Israel. At that point, the inconsistency, the stupidity, the flaws in their argument came to my mind that how can you, on the one hand, say that Israel has no right to exist, but when you see Jewish people, ask them to go back to Israel. And that then took me on an entire journey of questioning, of wondering about our attitudes towards the Jewish people whom, by the way, the Prophet Muhammad welcomed in Medina. We forget that at our peril. My view towards the Jewish people and by extension Israel changed when I lived in New York. I encountered the warmth and hospitality of Jewish people. I studied Jewish literature, the influence Musa bin Maimun or Maimonides had on Islam and Islam had on him. And more specifically, when I traveled to Israel, I defied Muslim group thinking and collectivist thought and went to Israel because I saw prominent Muslim scholars, Habib Ali al-Jifri, uh, Egypt's then Mufti Ali Jum'a, uh, Jordan's Prince Ghazi and others inviting Muslims to come to, to Jerusalem. And during that journey to Jerusalem, I met with Jewish people as well as Arabs. I met Palestinians as well as Israelis. And I realized that we had been blinded by the extremism and bigotry and the hatred of Jewish people that continues to nourish angry Arab literalists who came to the West, brought with them a, a, an attitude towards Hadith literature that caused us problems here and problems in the Middle East. For example, teaching us that the, the, the last battle, this imagined apocalyptic battle that would take place between Jews and Muslims and some tree would say to every Muslim, oh, there's a, yeah, Abdullah, there's a Jew behind me, come and kill him. The last day wouldn't appear before this imagined battle would happen. What we miss in all of this as Muslims is that early Muslims rejected this kind of illogical, perverse hadith. The focus on hadith always was, was it in compliance with the Quran? Was it in compliance with the Prophet's character? And did it make sense with the history and the seerah and the overriding compassion of, uh, of Rahmatul Lil Alameen? The, the mercy to mankind that the Prophet is described by God in the Quran. As I traveled across the Middle East, studied in Syria and Saudi Arabia, I realized that these were allegations against the Prophet that, that don't stand up to modern scrutiny. The, the Prophet could not have married a Jewish lady, stood up for a Jewish funeral, called on us to be circumcised like our Jewish cousins, allowed for us to marry Jewish women, and then said, kill Jews wherever you find them. So rather than placing them in their historical context and questioning their veracity, we have become literalists and extremists and started to claim that Jerusalem does not belong to the Jews. How dare we when Sayyidina Umar, the second caliph of Islam, invited Jewish people back after 500 years of banishment by the Romans, what is this modern obsession that the Jewish people have no right to Jerusalem when Jewish scriptures refer to Jerusalem more than 600 times the Old Testament? In the Quran, there is no one direct reference to Masjid al-Aqsa al-Quds being here in this world. 
as an indirect reference, Sufyan al-Thawri and other Muslim scholars thought that was in the heavens. So even for us, our claim to Jerusalem is contested. For the Jewish people, the claim to Jerusalem is completely verified and in keeping with at least 38 centuries of their history. As Muslims, we honor the Ashraf or the Sadat, the descendants of the Prophet Muhammad What then of the descendants of hundreds of other Prophets? The Jewish people today, we forget. Yaqub or Jacob is another name for Israel or Israel. So we should honor them and challenge the extremism and bigotry whenever it comes up in our masajid, in our mosques, on our websites, in our uh, university campuses. This hatred of Jewish people must end. And we have other problems inside the house of Islam. And my next video on JTV will talk about some of those problems. To stay up to date with the latest JTV content, if you're on YouTube, click subscribe below the video and the alarm bell. And if you're on Facebook, click the like button and under following, click see first.